Good morning and welcome to St Cuthbert's Church, West Hampstead. I'm the Reverend Hugh Thomas, the Associate Vicar at this lovely church. Shortly we'll be starting our morning worship, but before we do that, just a reminder for those of you who watch on YouTube, please share this, like it, comment on it, and most importantly subscribe to this so you can see our other videos as soon as they come out and do press that notification bell. Good morning and welcome everyone and our opening hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 12. <laughs>
say what a joy to be able to sing once again, to share our worship, as it were, in common voice and praise. And lovely to have a congregation here again, in real life, so to speak. And we rejoice as we begin our morning worship now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us in a moment of silence call to mind the things that we have done and perhaps wish we hadn't. We will use our prayer of preparation, keep a moment of silence as we recall our complicated lives this last week or month. First of all, we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy and magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord, God heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, to receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. So our first reading today is from the book of Exodus 16, 2 through 4, and then 9 through 15. So the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. 
The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, then we, when we were sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, a wonderful reading about sustenance and nourishment and this same theme is celebrated in our coming hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, number 252. We'll stand and sing. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were at the place where Jesus had given the bread, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? 
Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. Well, we've just heard how a crowd of people come looking for Jesus and we also know why they came. Because it was only the day before that Jesus had miraculously provided them with food. The loaves, the fishes, out of nowhere. And today they're chasing him up because they want another free lunch. What they don't understand is the message behind that miracle. Jesus meant it as a sign, a promise of the spiritual food available to them if they follow Jesus. And that is a very different offer. I guess it's easy in some ways to sympathize with that crowd who chased up Jesus. They'd been looking forward to some more free lunches Food they didn't have to work for, didn't have to pay for. And when our needs are met in that way, it does feel nice. I had a recent experience of that in connection not with food, but with my computer. I am hopelessly um, technophobic, no good whatever at technology. But my son is a wizard at it, and he has been living with us. He's here at the moment. And up till recently, every time I've had a little computer problem, I've called Keith, and he's appeared immediately, and put it right, blop, 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 there you are, all done, there you go. <coughs> but last week he said to me, Mum, I've been thinking, I won't be here forever with you, what I could do for you is something much more valuable. I could teach you how to understand the computer and technology. And if I taught you how to do it, then you would have a resource in yourself that you could draw upon every time you needed it. Well, food for thought there. We'll see where that takes us. But in a not dissimilar way, Jesus is telling the crowd, the bread of heaven, God's sustaining spiritual food, <clears throat> that is what you really need. That <clears throat> comes from the God who provided the nourishment <coughs> for the Israelites in the wilderness. And Jesus tells them, this same generous, loving God is more than ready to meet your spiritual needs giving you courage, hope, joy, confidence, 
however challenging your circumstances may be. Because when we think about it, life is not always easy. Not for us in the 21st century, <laughs> as we all know. Out of the blue, we could be faced with, for example, a medical diagnosis which makes us frightened. We might be caught up in a row between one side of the family or another, or there might have been a falling out between a church congregation and the vicar. These things happen as well. And in those circumstances, we can sometimes feel like giving up on it all. Oh my goodness, I don't have the energy. I don't have the energy to cope anymore. But by drawing upon the bread of heaven, we find that we do still have the inner strength to front out our difficulties. And this spiritual bread sustains us in our trials and also this same bread from heaven encourages us to be positive and hopeful and cheerful and expectant of the occasional nice surprise in life. And I'll share you one that I had only last week. I was in the Lake District on holiday in a cottage. We were stocking up for our meal needs for the week outside, what was it, Morrison Supermarket. <laughs> and there was a long, long queue of people because they were restricting the numbers that could get in. And I stood there and thought, this is going to be a long wait. And then an elderly man stepped forward with a wind instrument. It might have been an oboe, I'm not sure. And he had a message round his neck which read, I am not a busker, I love music. And he began to play. And it somehow had a transforming effect on the cue. And then the man stopped for a breather and he said to us, what sort of music do you like then? <laughs> and I got in quickly, I said, hymns, I love hymns. And he said, well, suggest one. And I suggested what we've just sung. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. <laughs> and he began to play. And then he nodded to me and said, Why don't you sing along with me? I took a deep <laughs> breath and thought, Could happen. So I moved out of the queue and I stood beside him. And together we performed two verses of Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. And when we stopped, there was a huge burst of applause from the crowd, quite unexpectedly. And I thought, what a moment of total surprise. I could never have imagined this in a million years. But just for that moment, it felt amazing to have this wonderful music in my head and the pleasure of it. it because I hadn't actually done it to look famous. I'd done it because I was caught up in the music and the words. And it, it was a, a treasured moment, I would have to say. So, what was I going to say? Yes, I'm going to quote from a hymn to end our little thoughts time today. The hymn is called Bread of Heaven, and the words go, Ever may our souls be fed with this true and living bread, day by day new life supplied through the life of him who died. Amen. Amen. And shall we now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you today in a spirit of thankfulness. We renew our faith in your readiness to sustain and nourish us in all circumstances. We gather this morning as your people, called by you as your church, to proclaim the good news of your saving grace and your comforting presence. Bless us as we encourage one another to live courageously and joyfully, feeding on the spiritual bread which you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the wider world, for all who in distant lands and in our own country may suffer from physical hunger and need. We ask your blessing on all who work faithfully to address issues of poverty and want. And before we hold before you those within our own neighbourhood who rely on the availability of local provision, sustained with the help of this church community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before God those who are close to us, family, neighbours, friends, members of this congregation. We pray for Father Hugh and for Jen that they may have some restoring time away. And we ask your blessing now on any within this congregation about whom we may be thinking, who are in particular need of our prayers and concerns. And we continue to uphold in prayer all who are still suffering as a result of the pandemic, those who've lost their lives, those who are ill or isolated, and all who work within the National Health Service with continuing devotion and energy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> and we'll keep a moment of silence as we hold before God now any special concerns we have in our hearts. In your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And we'll end with a prayer written many decades ago. O thou who hast taught us that we are most truly free when we lose our wills in thine, help us to 
attain this liberty by continuing to offer ourselves in loving surrender to thee. That walking in the way which thou hast prepared for us, we may find our life, our resources for living in doing thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We've come to the sharing of the peace. I forgot to check with anybody what the general practice at the moment is. I think it's a, an arms wave. Let's do it that way. Shall we stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share one another a sign of peace. And we'll now sing our offertory hymn number 21. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of paramount, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same night, the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing at his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours for ever, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done on earth, earth as it as is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
we say together, we do not presume to come to this ta or table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll say the post-communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now, I haven't been supplied with any notices. Um, Matt, do you know of anything that we're meant to be sharing with one another? Has anybody got any exciting news they want to share with us at this moment? No. Um, I believe that Father Hugh is away for two weeks, that's right, so he's not here next week. And um, somebody is helpfully stepping in next week. And as I said at the beginning, what a blessing and a reason for rejoicing that we are actually able to gather as we are. That's wonderful. And we're thinking of the people who in our congregation might have been here but are on holiday. All sorts of reasons why we are a fairly small group but we are together and we're here. Would you stand for the blessing? The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn, number 474. Now thank we all our God.